food waste. Will it pyrolysize? Now, I will say I'm quite excited to do this right here because, you know, one of the first things I ever wanted to do was food waste uh, and see how it works. So, you know, we have all types of goodies. We got Lay's chips. I got a whole bag full of, you know, all types of stale chips that, you know, my family was going to throw out. And I was like, hold on now. Let's actually pyrolysize this stuff. So, yeah, we're going to do this here today. And... We're gonna start off with these Lay's chips, you know, and you know what a thing about these chips is They have a lot of oil content in them, right? So, you know, I reckon of course it's vegetable oil But I reckon that oil will actually go somewhere in the reactor like it might actually end up precipitating as some type of fuel oil So I got Ritz crackers here. I got these little buffalo pieces and crap like I'm telling you man we're doing everything okay I know it's probably more scientific to do one specific type of food or one category of food maybe just dry foods just w whatever but today we're doing a little bit of everything um, we can do more specific things in the future so yeah literally all types of stuff is going in there right now granolas tortillas saltines i mean come on now this is what food waste really looks like come on like tell me it's just one thing it's never that way so we're actually gonna try to apply this at a scale of doing real food waste we gotta see how it all goes together right so that's what we're doing now you can't forget the sweets too you know i'm sure this branch has a little bit of a sweet too put that candy cane up in there i mean what more can i say Got Mexican cheese. Come on, we're making like a little a little pasta bowl here or something. You know, a little Italian bowl or some crap. You know, we got all types of cheese. You know, they said this was expired. I don't really know. Who knows, right? I hey, they just gave me the food waste and I just said, all right, I'll put it together and we'll see what we get. Uh, I'm, this surely cannot smell good. There's no way. There's some chicken here. Some um some fried chicken tender bites or some crap. I don't know what the hell all this stuff is. Is this some type of pudding or cake? Like I said, we're really not limiting ourselves here. We're putting just about everything under the sun in here. Because uh really, like I said, we're trying to simulate like let's say this um was from like a casino or a diner or some crap, you know, a restaurant, throw out all their food and goes into the reactor. This is gonna be how it is, you know. It's not gonna be a monoculture so can't forget the biscuits either man this is a little croissant i mean a holy croissant we're just gonna set that on top it's like the crown of this whole thing that's what we're doing so we got this stuff let's get this thing started so i'll go ahead and i'll put this lid on you know how we do screw down all the damn nuts and bolts takes about yeah i'd say it takes about at least three minutes you know i have to sped up here for you so before we get started, let me show anybody new how this works. So this is a magnetron which forms microwaves which will shoot down into this chamber and heat up the food. And when the food breaks down into a vapor, the vapor will shoot out these pipes and come up into this right here which is a condenser with steel wool. And that will act as a heat exchanger and cause any oils or waters to fall down. And the vapors will travel up and hit this other condenser full of copper and steel wool, doing the same thing again down there for any extra stuff that doesn't condense. And after that, any more vapors go into this water bubbler, an alkaline water bubbler, it reacts with any acidic things and all that type of stuff. And then we have a filter with activated carbon and clay in there to clean it up some more. And that filtered clean gas then is stored in these yoga balls here, where there's just one, but I have three. So that's how that works. So let's get started. But wait. You need no oxygen in pyrolysis. This is not the same as burning something or setting it on fire at all. So how do we get the oxygen out of here? Well, in this tank, I have pyrolysis gas or the gas from previous reactions compressed. I'm going to turn this tank on and this is connected to the reactor and it's just going to push out any oxygen. Now this gas is flammable, so a good way to check if all the oxygen is out is if I can light this on fire at the end over here. So as you can see, it is lighting on fire, nice and beautiful flame there. So there's no oxygen in this thing, so let's get it started. But I do have this um, this kilowatt meter right here. Uh, and this will let us know not only 
how much electricity this thing consumes, but also how much time it's on for. So I have this on right now, and you see I have my little EMF reader here, and this lets me know microwaves are being formed without having to touch anything because electronics are dangerous. So I turn this on, um, and usually when microwave paralysis is so quick, we like to check for flammable vapor formation literally in the first couple seconds. So as you can see right now, we have no immediate vapor formation. 30 minutes in, let's see how it looks. So about 32 minutes in, we do have some flammable vapors forming as you can see here. Not all that much. The flame is kind of hard to see, but it is something. Um, so the food is absorbing microwaves, it is breaking down, and it is forming flammable vapors. About a minute or an hour and 26 minutes in, as you can see, it's, it's still pretty poor. I wouldn't say this is good performance at all, but let's see any type of oil or water yields here, or any liquids that condensed, rather. So you can see we do have some liquids that came out this first catch here. And as we look at it, I would say that is pretty much almost 100% water, you know, which is expected. And you can see the yoga ball does have some gas in it. And let's do a little test to open up this other valve here. And we'll see, as you see, it is flammable gas. So even though there's slow gas production, there is still gas production to some degree. So at this point, I went ahead and I took this lid off because we need to add a catalyst to this reaction. Now, as I took the lid off, some vapor formed at the top, and I wanted to see if it was flammable. And as you see, it actually was quite flammable, and it made a pretty clean flame, if you ask me. But anyways, as I was saying, I want to add a catalyst, because basically, a catalyst is an, another type of material that absorbs microwaves readily, like, and it gets superheated under microwaves. So it basically will boost this a lot, okay? And I, I know it's kind of surprising, you know, you put a hot pocket in the microwave, it gets super hot, but all of a sudden, this food isn't doing that well. So you can see, it is some charring going on there, and it did form one giant homogenous clump, which was kind of interesting to me, you know. I know when we do plastic and stuff that happens, but I was not expecting food to all clump up like this. But it really was one giant clump, and I had to really put some effort in to break it up. And you could see that it kind of got crispy, you know, that little croissant at the top. So, you know, things were breaking down, things were heating up. Um, look at all that water content in there, how much moisture uh, got precipitated out and probably um, is being released. So at this point, the catalyst we're going to add is this is a carbon catalyst, and this is carbon from previous reactions. When you finish pyrolysis, it is usually the end product you get, and this is actually a two-in-one because not only do you get this as a byproduct, but it's an amazing microwave catalyst. So here is also clay or kitty litter, literally just kitty litter. And I add this too. This is another amazing catalyst. Both of these things absorb microwaves really well, and they boost the reaction and boost the formation of oils and, and, and all types of stuff and the gases. So overall, it's like, why not add these things? I like to always do a control test but without them when I do will it pyrolysize. But if it were up to me, I would never do pyrolysis without a catalyst. It just is more energy efficient. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and push out the oxygen again. Same ritual same routine go ahead do our check as you see got the oxygen out got microwaves forming let's see i just turned this thing on let's see if we got some flammable vapors so this has literally been turned on not even 30 seconds ago and guess what we have flammable vapors forming already so for everybody wondering even things that absorb microwaves always perform better with a microwave catalyst in there okay the carbon and the clay get superheated by microwaves and then that superheat is transferred to the food directly so let's see the oil formations as you see unlike before not only are we getting water but we have some type of dark liquid coming out of there as well some type of like it's interesting as you see yeah, I don't really know what the heck it is, but it's some type of other secondary liquid coming out, as well as the water. And we have a couple yoga balls full, five hours and almost six. You can see the flammable vapor formation way better than before. Um, so I, this thing is definitely going now. So the food is definitely breaking down, and it's... It's really making fuel. We're really making fuel out of a damn croissant, some cake, and chicken tenders. <laughs> Crazy, right? 
So this is the second condenser catch here, which normally doesn't get as much oil or water coming out of it. We saw we have some there. So I took some of this um, this oil that we collected, and I wanted to see what the heck it was. And you can see this is really syrupy, thick, yucky stuff. Um, it was just like, so you could tell it was not just water. There was something else there. But I don't know what the hell that stuff is. Like, I guess you could say it's oil. But it just, like, had the consistency of, like, a, a slurry. You know? <laughs> like, ugh. Yuck. But anyways, six hours in. Eight kilowatt hours. Um, and you can see we have almost two yoga balls full. But this is actually the next morning. Okay? So it's not eight hours in at this point, I believe. Actually, this is the next morning. And I was running it. Yeah, for almost nine hours, as you see. Um, and... We did get some more oil. This is the first condenser catch right here. Almost 10 hours in. And at this point, I had to add the third yoga ball because both yoga balls were full. But let's also see how much vapor is forming. And you see I open up this valve and we got a lot of vapor forming still even after 10 hours. So, and that's crazy to me because the energy density of this food is the same as plastic. When I put plastic in here, it'll do the same thing after 10 hours, you know. 13 hours in see we have almost all three yoga balls filled up pretty well I open up this port and there's so much vapor formation. It literally shot out under pressure 13 hours in we didn't even fill up the whole reactor with food. What in the world? Okay, so let's also check this oil Still getting oil still getting that water look it looks like sewage or something like what in the world is this crap? And I gotta tell you guys it did not smell good either um, honestly, the smell of this food waste in this reactor was my least favorite smell ever. So at this point, we have all three yoga balls, I'd say, pretty much full of this beautiful pyrolysis gas. And I took this footage at nighttime of me lighting it, and you can see it's the same flame as we always get. A nice blue base, and it becomes white near the end, white and orange. Beautiful flame. 14 hours in at this point. I was like, okay, it's still making fuel by the way It's still producing vapors, but I said we're gonna stop it because You know, I just want to see where it's at and I just was astonished by how much energy was in that food Like it just it, it kept going it wouldn't stop You see we're still getting oil. We're still getting gas So, you know, I just wanted to see how it looked after 14 hours of running So at this point I wanted to really take a look at this oil so the first thing i wanted to do is separate all the water because maybe this whole thing is just water mixed with some carbon or crap but i wanted to check so first of all i put it in my separatory funnel here and as you see it's still really chunky coming down out of there and we also ran into a couple issues because of this chunky mess as you can see um, near the top here, I was having a lot of issues actually getting a lot to come through the strainer here. I had to have a strainer, it will clog this separatory funnel like all hell. And you look, just look at it, like, this is honestly disgusting. This is the most disgusting oil I've ever worked with. And like I said, it didn't smell good either. It smelled, it's, it smelled like the devil's pubic hair. Like, it was horrible. Like, ugh, yuck. And just look at the stuff, like... It doesn't have to look so yucky too, just the texture, the consistency, the smell. It was horrible, so I put my respirator on. Um, but you see, after a little bit of struggle, we did get it in the separatory funnel properly. And we were getting some water out, as you see. So, and at some point, this oil did start coming over as well. I put some more of the oil in there that I got through the strainer, and then we got... I, tr I wanted to get all the water out at once, pretty much. Um, and we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna do another episode one day where I filter and properly decontaminate all the water from things like the water bubbler, from all this stuff. Because, you know, it's all important that this whole cycle is clean and environmentally friendly, you know. Why are we gonna try to be removing pollution or waste from one area to be putting it somewhere else right? So now you can see this is actual the pure oil in quotation marks coming out, and that's... I don't know what the hell this stuff is, guys, but it is so disgusting. Like, look at it. It literally looks like a parade of, like, everything blended together. Just yuck, man. So I poured it into this jar here. 
because it got so full and then I went to go pour the last bits of oil I had into this thing and I made a huge mistake. I spilt this nasty crap everywhere and oh my goodness, I, that, it was the worst, like this is the worst thing I could have ever spilled like this. It made my whole lab smell like leprosy and Brexit for the rest of the day, like rabies and just everything you don't want, mate. Cheetah AIDS, just like goodness gracious, I it was horrible. It was honestly horrible, and I wanted to get out of here as soon as possible. But I knew I had to clean this up because if I left it, it would be it would only get worse. So I was like, okay, well this this fuel is absolute disaster. But let's see, at least if it burns, right? Maybe it might be a it might be a good fuel. You know, we'll never know until we test it. So I did use some ethanol or denatured alcohol as a uh, a solvent to help me get it through the, the the filter so this stuff burning right now that you see is not the actual sludge this is the, actually just the denatured alcohol you can tell by how clean it's burning smokeless the, the flame is just like denatured alcohol so even though that stuff is kind of bubbling under there I wouldn't necessarily say it was burning so I put the um the pipette really down deep in it to get just the, the sludge and you see it won't hold a flame at all. Uh, and that's why I don't know what this is, you know. Like, I'm like, is this oil? Is this water? What is it? So I added some denatured alcohol on top of it because I honestly want this stuff to burn. I, you know what I'm saying? I want it gone. I don't want it to just be in this lid for any longer, okay? I want this stuff in the pits of hell because it's it's disgusting. Lord have mercy. And you see, once again, it's just the denatured alcohol burning. And this stuff is bubbling up a little bit. But that really, I don't know what the heck it is. It just ends up looking like... So, since this stuff cannot burn, or it will not burn, it needs to be properly handled, not only now, but for all future generations of this world. Because this is a weapon of mass destruction. This is chemical warfare. And in the wrong hands, it can be used for evil evil things so because of that i'm going to make sure that anybody that may not know what the heck this stuff is does not open it so i'll put a disclaimer on here for everybody to know so let's take a look at this carbon product here so for this carbon product i was kind of scared i won't lie after the horrible experience with the oil i was kind of scared to touch it at all but honestly it, w it was actually really good i would say this is some of the best and most even carbonization we've ever had of anything in this series i'd say grass clippings were pretty good too but this stuff it, it was really good you know because sometimes when you do things really energy dense they don't carbonize all that well like plastic does not carbonize all that well without agitation and stuff but anyways as you can see we do have some chunks in here but all these chunks are nice and brittle and just fall apart real easily. And you can see we have a lot of that nice and fine powder carbon over there as well. Um, so I would say like overall really, really good carbonization. Um, and we do have these big chunks and these these big chunks do have some residual matter in them. This probably was the last things to burn, but this was at the very bottom, right? Like a bottom cake. So that's just going to go back in as a catalyst. And... It will absorb microwaves just fine and break down again. So, you see, this is really good stuff. It sounds metallic. That beautiful metallic sound of minerals in the carbon. So, overall, I gotta say, will food pyrolysize? Absolutely, it will. Maybe, maybe stay away from the oil. But other than that, <laughs> food will pyrolysize. So, other than that, take care, guys. Leave your suggestions. See you next time.